Let's move on to a crucial chapter in our health story, our diet. A pattern we repeat several times a day. Our diet can have an incredible impact on our well-being, particularly in cancer prevention and shaping our overall health journey. Consider this interesting study. African Americans have a higher rate of colon cancer compared to rural South Africans, with dietary patterns playing a key role. Typically, a diet high in animal proteins and fat and low in fiber has been associated with increased cancer risk markers. Yet when groups swap diets just for two weeks, the results were remarkable. In just two weeks, the switch to a high fiber, low fat diet led to a healthier gut activity in African American participants, enhancing their fiber fermentation and reducing inflammation causing substances. Conversely, the rural Africans adopting a high fat, low fiber Western diet experienced an increase in those same harmful substances. This vividly shows how quickly and significantly our diet can alter our body's health markers, impacting our cancer risk. Zooming in on the gut, we discover it's a bustling ecosystem with a population that outnumbers our cells tenfold. These microbes are more than tiny tenants. They're crucial to our health puzzle. This complex network of bacteria in our gut has a hand in everything from digestion to immune system. And yes, even the development and treatment of colorectal cancer. Scientists are tapping into this microbial power with treatments like fecal matter transplant, which transplants healthy bacteria into patients. It's a frontier in medicine that's not only fascinating, but also holds promise for turning the tide in the fight against colorectal cancer. Here's a part that might be surprising to many. Cooking meat, especially at high temperatures or over an open flame, can produce carcinogenic compounds. Heterocyclic amines, or HCAs, form when meat is cooked at high temperatures, like when grilling or frying. Another compound to watch out for is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. These form when fat from meat drips onto a hot surface, creating smoke that then sticks to the meat. High consumption of red and processed meats has been linked to an increased risk of certain cancers, such as colorectal cancer. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has labeled red meat consumption as probably carcinogenic to humans, classified in Group 2A. This doesn't mean that eating cooked meat will absolutely cause cancer, but it indicates an increased risk, influenced by how often and how much we eat, the way we cook it, and our individual genetic makeup. I am not suggesting we all become vegetarians, but only to cut down, because the less processed and red meat you eat, the lower your risk. So it's all about moderation and being mindful of what we are eating. And what I do strongly recommend is cooking meat at lower temperatures, and for a shorter time if possible. Also avoid direct flames and prevent meat from getting charred to minimize risk. Favorite cooking methods like steaming or poaching over high temperature grilling and frying. And don't forget about marinating your meat. It's not just for flavor. Marinades with antioxidants from herbs, spices, wine, lemon juice, or olive oil can help reduce the formation of carcinogenic compounds like HCAs and PAHs. Lastly, the good news is that recent studies suggest the consumption of whole grains, fruits, and vegetables can reduce the cancer risk associated with red and processed meat. These plant foods are packed with essential nutrients, antioxidants, and bioactive compounds like polyphenols that may protect against cancer.